everybody, David here, and I'm with my good friend, no introduction, yeah, Coach man. Dave. How you doing, Great, Coach? Buddy. Great good. to be here. Thanks. Good. Thanks. Okay, so you went to a abortion clinic. Mm -hmm. All right. All hands on deck is the name of the the, the event the you event put we together. Had. That's right, Coach. I'm going to ask you because there's there's people out there that's tuned in. I know that hear about people who go to abortion clinics, they pick at the OID. What do you do when you go there? Wow, that's a great question. It's, and so our event was called All Hands on Deck because we're trying, we work very hard here at Pass Assault Ministries to try to get men in particular to engage in the war. And we really believe, you know, there's a big difference, David, between sitting in a football stadium and watching a football game right. and actually being out on that field and having to tackle the guy that's carrying the ball. It's two different experiences, right? Right. right. So we believe that people are never going to really understand the battle until they get in the battle. And so when we said all hands on deck, we asked for guys to come from all across America to come and join us, that we're going to take you, we're going to put you in the game. We're going to take you and we're going to put you on the field. Okay, these are people that, that, that are followers of you. I don't you, like to use that well, term, but yes. Well, they, they listen to your listen program. To they know right. who you are. Mm -hmm. You put the word out. You said, guys, girls, at this date, show up here. We're right. going to go to the abortion clinic. We had about 80 people come from 21 different states. Wow. 21. Wow. Most of them had never done anything like it. And we had a okay. weekend where we were going to go to the homosexual pride shame parade, homosexual okay. shame parade in Columbus and okay. uh, the bathhouse, the abortion clinic, and a mosque. Okay. So we covered all four of those things in a weekend. But the, the abortion clinic, they, I've been doing that pretty regular. We go pretty I, regular to I, the clinic. I know you have. So you, you get the guys together, the girls, mm -hmm. 80 of them. What do you say to them before you go to the clinic? Do you tell them anything before you go? Well, we give them a little bit of a debriefing about what they're going to see and what they can okay. expect. But uh, I've done it enough to know that they cannot believe it and they cannot expect it. Okay, so you go there. What do you do when you first get there? Well, we get there and we, uh, uh, de depending on the clinic, but the one that we were at, is it's, it's funny the way it's set up because you can be in the front of it and you can be in the back of it because there's an alley behind it. Okay, so girls go in the front, they go in the back. Well, they, they all come in the back and they walk around the front to go in. So it's, it's a unique okay. setup. Right. But there's buildings beside it, side it, David, so you can't get between them. So you either catch them in the back or you catch them in the okay. front. So we warned people about what was going on in the death scorch, which are the people who escort the, the women come up in their cars, and then these volunteers go and escort them out of their car. Oh, okay, wait a minute. A woman pulls up in the car who's right, pregnant, right? and you get volunteers to actually walk up to their car and escort them in the place? That's right. We call them death scorts because they're escorting the children. Death to scorts. Death. Yes. Does this happen at most clinics? It happens all the time. That's why it's important for people well, to get there and see it. See? Why do they do that? Why do they have these, oh, these death man. scorts? Why do they walk the girls in there? Because the Bible says that all those who hate me love death. And there's an unbelievable... Uh, try to figure this one out for me, folks. The connection between homosexuality, lesbianism... An abortion. Why would, a, why would a lesbian care about abortion? Other than they're two fingers of the same glove, and I call it a Christ-hating glove. They both hate Christ. Now, that sounds harsh, but I'm just telling you the they, truth, they, man. They hate the truth, but I'm still stuck on a woman pulls up, and you have two other people, mostly women, maybe, right? Maybe three, maybe, maybe four. Three, walk to their car, it, it, yes. And they escort the girl inside the building. Folks, if I was making a horror film or making some <laughs> Holocaust movie, this is exactly the way I would write it. That's right. Someone pulls up, yep. you know, drums roll, music embellishes. You have someone escorting someone to the gas chamber. Right. Or someone escorting someone to, to be murdered. You got it, man. You got it, David. This, and, and so what I'm saying, most people have never seen it that. It can't right? be real. This cannot be no, real. No, I mean, listen. I, okay, if you're like me, guys, out there, listen, we're on the Right to Life channel here at uh, David Hebner TV. If you're like me, you've heard all about this, people picketing abortion clinics, all this stuff, but this is the first time I've really... Heard that there's death scorts, yeah. escorts, oh, yeah. escort. Okay, so I go back to my question: Why do you think they walk out there? They get the girl and they bring her through the door. What do you think the reason for that is? All those who hate me love death. I think it's a spiritual, spiritual reason. I think yeah. that I think they're angry with Christ. They're angry uh, with Christianity, okay. but, and so. Therefore, misery loves company, does it not? Right. So they want to drag as many could, people could, as they can. Could it be that when the girl pulls up, that they might have second thoughts? But if someone gets out there to well, them, of course. 
and, they try and, to prevent and us from prevent and walking them. How evil that is, David! You are that I, is sick. That's why I'm saying this is why people need to see this. See, so we take these people who've never been to an abortion clinic, right? Right. And we've explained to them, here's what you're going to see. Now I can tell you that. Here's what you're going to see. But buddy, till you see till it, you see it. <laughs> You can't and believe it. Coach, here's the thing. I mean, let, let's let's take God out of the picture, even though we can't really take God out of the picture. Let's just look at it from a moral, humanistic standpoint. Wouldn't a normal person say, okay, fine, if you pull up and you decide you don't want to kill your baby, then maybe you shouldn't. If they're pro-choice. It, yeah, I mean, but, but a normal, just, just moral right, person, right. you have that... Pro-choice, like you choice. say. Let her make the right choice. But no, what they do is they intentionally go out, they manipulate the girl out of the car, they bring her in, and they're saying to those uh, uh, pro-life people, don't you dare touch her. Uh, you stay away from her. You keep your mouth shut. Folks, do you see the evil this is? Oh, I mean, come on. This is crazy. Okay, so anyway, so they escort him in. What do you What, so what David, do? You do? We, we, we took, here's what, folks, listen, I want you to stay with me a second. Here's what it is. They pull up, they get out of their car, David. They have to walk uh 200 feet so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen six they're probably there that's how long you have to appeal to that to woman don't kill your baby okay what do you say great Green? so we take all the people there and we yeah. say listen first thing we say don't everybody speak at once because if I started yelling David, we all start yelling, right? So right. let whoever the Holy Spirit's moved upon, let them speak. Everybody else be quiet. Okay. Sometimes you appeal to the man, which, by the way, rarely is a man there, David. Okay. Rarely. And that's why we say the Scripture says to rescue the wi widow and orphan in their time of distress. Because the woman is a widow. There's no, there's no man with her. He, yeah. he got her pregnant. But he yeah. ain't there. Right. And then the orphan's the baby that's going to be killed. And wow. we're called to go rescue them, wow. right? And in that's what Scripture says. This is true religion, right? <laughs> Brother, it's true religion. So we, we, we tried to coach all these guys. Say, listen, just stand back and watch what happens. And, you know, uh, one person speaks, let them speak. And But you got how long? One, you don't have very long, buddy. Right. What do you say? Well, like, a lot of times I would say... Uh, I, if oh, okay. a, Let's yep. do it this way. Let's say the camera, the audience out there, is that girl walking into the abortion clinic. What? Would, sweetheart, sweetheart, please don't kill your baby. We'll, listen, we'll do whatever we can. We will adopt your baby. We will give you financial aid. This is the worst decision that you're ever going to make in your life. That little baby is going to be on your refrigerator nine months from today. Please don't kill. That's, that's what we say. Yeah. Wow. That's what we say. And then if the man's there saying, sir, sir, stand up and be a man. Real men raise babies. They don't kill babies. Rescue your your girlfriend and your child. Your child's depending on you. That's what we say. And you don't have long to say it, do you? Uh, what do the death scorts say to you? The people uh, ushering the girls in. Well, under, what do get, they say get the to picture you? of this. The girls surrounded by two or three, or depending on how the, many are there. Okay, and they try to shield you from them. Yeah, and they all you can't get near them, right? And of course, the death scorts are then are whispering in there. It'll be okay. Come on, we'll be since we get inside. Just to, we can imagine what's going on, right? Right. And so, in that thirty seconds, you have an opportunity, right, to try to rescue that baby, David. I mean, right. that's it. They're not going. Hey, folks, listen. They're not going to go clean their teeth. They're not going to the dentist. Right. There's going to be one dead. And right. ones whose life will never, ever be the same when they walk out of there. So we see it as a, I mean, it's a rescue mission, right? So we take all these people and we tell them, you know, let's do it in order and yada, 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 yada. I saw the most amazing thing happen, David. When those cars started pulling in, our people that were there, something rose up out of the bottom of them like I have never seen. And even though we told them, speak one at a time, it became a clamor from these people who saw what was going on and said, someone has got to stop this. So, so they all jumped in at the same time and started, Yes, right? And they yes. did what you asked them not to right. do. <laughs> yeah. You got to stop this. But see, I stepped so, back and let them do it because it was the Holy Spirit right. in them. Exactly, exactly. Uh, righteous yeah. anger was coming up inside. A absolutely. Them. So here's my question. So you, you, you've said to the, you've told or informed the young girl, this is murder. Don't go kill your baby. You've given them all the information you could possibly give them. Right. Are they looking at you when you're saying this, or do they look away? Well, some of them will have their head down uh, uh, because they're not they're not proud of what they're doing. We, we use this okay. illustration. It's like an animal who has his foot caught in a trap. Yeah. 
They don't want to gnaw their leg off. But they, they don't see any other options. Uh, uh, okay, okay. So they don't look at you. They keep walking. How many women actually turn away? We had, uh, uh, we had one that happened. When all of those people were there, yeah. we actually had a man who was with his girlfriend. It's quite a story. I talked to him afterwards, ministered yeah. to him afterwards. It wasn't his wife, and it wasn't his girlfriend. It was just somebody he laid with. Yeah. She got pregnant. Right. His girlfriend that he's... What a story, right? Right. And you know what he had tattooed on his leg? What? Family matters. On his leg, he had tattooed on his leg. Family matters. Wow. And he's going in to kill one of his babies. Wow. And I appealed hard to him on that. And he went inside. And he was in about 10 minutes, David, and he came back out and brought her with him. So she didn't have the she abortion. She didn't have the abortion. Christ Still God. had a functioning conscience, right? Christ Still had a... God. And how that how that encouraged all of us who were out there to see that this is a this is a life saving mission and it really can work. Now, David, people who have never been there, it's easy for them to watch video of it or right. whatever and be critical. Right. But they ain't never been there. They don't understand but, that dynamic that's right. going on. Folks, let, let me explain something to you because I'm in the media and I know how this works. First of all, the media, the mainstream media, has a hidden agenda. They do not want you to know the truth. Okay. So they're going to cover it and edit it in a way that people like Coach Dave, it's going to make him look like That's the criminal. Right. It'll, make, it'll make the girls look like victims, and it'll make the, these death scorts look like heroes. Right. Okay, It's not true. So don't believe it's not anything true. you see on mainstream media because they have an agenda. They're not pro-choice. They are okay. pro-murder. Let there be no doubt about it. They, okay. they want those babies dead. Okay. Why do they want them dead? What's the ultimate goal? What's the reason for it? It's rebellion, I think. And, I, and as much as we hate to say that they've been deeply wounded, David, whether they've been deeply wounded by a, a man, whether they had their own abortion themselves, whatever, whatever it is, these are deeply wounded women and men who are outside that abortion clinic. Okay, we're talking about the government has legalized abortion. Right. Okay, so it's legal. It's not murder, according to the government. It is, though. It, no, it is murder. Right. Uh -huh. But according to law, to the law of this land, mm -hmm. it's funny because it's the 4th of July, right? right? Independence Day. Right. Let me ask you a question. Could it be that the government the powers to be want abortion to be legal because human body parts can be sold. We know that's at the bottom of it, right? Human trafficking. We know that, right? We say that Planned Parenthood sells more body parts than AutoZone. And I believe that, David. What wow. happens to those babies after they're killed? Wow. Well, we know from inside what's going on. When we come back, I want to talk about human trafficking and how it pertains to abortion mm. and how it all ties together.